What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, it's been a crazy week for the execs at these studios. Incidentally, this is occurring from the same event. So this New York Times Deal Book Summit gathering a lot of these executives together. So we, we had a show on Bob Iger's commentary. Now that David Zaslav, CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, had his moment in the sun. And, you know, when you're a CEO, your your words get scrutinized when you put them in the yeah. public domain. And so the choice yeah. of words here, notable. What content is going to help us win, said Zaslav. The content that wasn't, we made a strategic decision on. It was difficult. It was painful. But I think it was the right decision for the company, and it was necessary. And it took a lot of courage. Bullshit, Mr. Handman. Referring specifically to the cancellation of Batgirl, among other content that they removed from the platform. I, I found that one, Brian. It was quite, it gave me chuckles, for sure. Because I'm trying to sort of relate courage and uh, how this is, how, how that decision was courageous. You know, again, I think as a CEO, you have to be careful. And I'm, I am surprised, honestly, that Zaslav took the route of basically making himself the hero of this particular story, which is kind of when you say it took a yeah. lot of courage for me to cancel a minority led completed project. He did go on to say, I think what was more accurate, which is it was a numbers game, right? Looking at what it cost to make the film, what it would have cost to market the film, bring it to theaters if their true belief was that it was not going to be successful, then the hard but maybe financially accurate thing to do would be to pull it entirely. I think where his words on this matter start to run into a little bit of problem is that he has not exactly shown himself to be a great judge of what will do and not do well at the box office, right? If he was sitting on a Flash movie that was as good as he hyped it up to be and made 700, 800 million dollars worldwide, his argument looks stronger. If Black Adam was as good as he said it was going to be and had made 700, 800 million dollars worldwide, his argument would look stronger. The reality is box office of everything that Warner Brothers has put out in this genre since he took over has yeah. not been successful. Yeah. So eliminating Batgirl entirely, while maybe financially justifiable, kind of stands out a little bit more when the other stuff you did promote and did send to the cons and did send to the theaters also bombed and didn't make money. So was it that much worse than that? Did it, would it have lost more money than <coughs> Flash did? Or that Aquaman is probably going to, right? Like that, I think, is where his comments start to lose a lot of steam. Yeah, because you could have put this on the streamer and then what? It wouldn't have cost you anything. To, I mean, you own your own platform. You can com do commercials there. Yeah, it would have cost you a little bit of money, but it wouldn't have cost you a whole bunch of money if you wanted sure. to really... You know what I'm saying? If you don't believe it, and you're not gonna, you're gonna at least put it on on HBO Max and let people or or sell it. Is it right? Yeah, yeah, which he's done with other content. That's the other thing that's sort of odd here is like you could have sold this to another distributor if it was done the way it was done. Somebody would have picked it up. It's still related tangentially to Batman. Michael Keaton was in the movie. Like, <laughs> this is what I have to say about this, Brian. Either this movie was like an atrocity, like that nobody can stomach. Was the room? If this movie was the room, an action, the room type film, where people lined up to go to the theaters to throw tomatoes at the screen <laughs> type movie, or. Well, that's the, the elephant in the room is that if you look at what they've promoted and sent to the screen versus taking this entirely off the board and never letting anyone see it or never letting it see the light of day, it feels more like something about the DNA of this project, which was greenlit before he became CEO, did not mesh 
with his vision for what these types of movies should be. Be, okay. That fits the facts a lot better than saying it was a courageous decision or even that it was a purely financial decision when your other financial decisions haven't gone well. It makes me wonder. It makes me wonder because you and I agree this project is never going to see the light of day as well. If they had finished the Ta-Nehisi Coates Black Superman, would he have done the same to that? Because that project's never going to happen. I don't care what anybody says. I haven't heard anything. Since they claim that it was still in the ether, I can name a number of updates we've heard on that. Zero. I think, Brian, if that movie was in development, yes, he would have done the same thing. Because at the end of the day, he needs to make this IP valuable. And he needs to make people care about it. So that in the short term, if it's possible, yeah, he can make some money to build the value up of this thing and perhaps even one day sell at what I said could happen. So that's my thought. If that if that was that project would have been dead. And like and you and you're exactly right, this movie is never gonna happen. Because he but the the thing that I, I'm shocked he didn't do is he, he could have extended an olive branch to the creators, to the actors who made the project. He could have phrased that differently to acknowledge the hard work they had put into it. He did it. He made it all about himself. That's still kind of aggressive opposition to what's out there. Now, this is a CEO, and I think this links to what else we want to talk about, who has said on the record, you know, Superman is the most, he views that as his number one priority one of the three most valuable IPs in the world and that he embraces and wants a traditional view of the project. As you say this, I remember before I had done renovations in my basement, we we were talking about this. This was during the pandemic. I think when it was first announced that Zazoff was taking over, you were saying this, that he, this, this is going to look traditional. He wants this to look traditional. And after we finished our last show, right after we taped it, we got the confirmation of Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. So you have David Corrin Sweat as Clark Kent, Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane, and Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. Look, all three of them talented performers. All three of them, we hope, do an awesome job. All three of them also look a lot like the traditional comics portrayal of those three characters. I, I, Pablo, I don't think it's a total accident, especially when you've got the CEO of your number one competitor now out there saying, we need to get back to doing entertainment over messaging. And you got this CEO saying, I want traditional. He is, to my mind, wanting to establish a universe that's almost a counterpoint to what he sees as what's going on over there at the Magic mm-hmm. Kingdom. So are there non-white characters in Superman Legacy? Yes, there are. In fact, the reports are Perry White's um, not going to be white. There's several other supporting characters who are not. But let's be frank. These are the leads. These are the characters who are most likely to carry the bulk of the lines and screen time in the movie. And they did not change the traditional ethnicity of any of them from the comics. It is notable to me. And and your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? Look, I mean, again, I mean, it's been, this is a sensitive subject, right? It's like you, you want to see, I've always said like, you want to see representation, but it, it is tricky. You don't want to force it down the audience's throat either. That's a balance, you know, you need to understand. Lex of the three, I don't know, like, Maybe he would have been the easiest to change the ethnicity of, but I don't know. I mean, they can always just say, look, these are the best possible actors, but I'm saying we know who they talk to, right? So we also know who else was on the list. I believe every candidate for every one of these roles was Caucasian. I don't believe there was a single option that that we know auditioned that wasn't, which means they never considered it. Considered it, yeah. 
which to me is no, it's just notable. Like, it, I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's right or wrong or that you support yeah. it or hate it. I'm pointing out the data to say that is not what Disney has typically been doing. And now Disney CEO is saying we're doing too much of that. Yeah. And you got a CEO yeah. that's crapping, right? A minority led Batgirl project. And then people are gonna say, well, what about Dwayne Johnson and the rock? I'm like, okay, that, but Dwayne, he's playing a not, he's, pl- he, he's one of the biggest movie stars in the world playing a non-white character. Like yeah. Zasloff would not see that in the same light. He wouldn't, yeah. but I don't want that to obscure Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. Cause that is a big moment, a big choice. I think you and I were kind of on the Bill Scar. I was on the Bill Skarsgård train. I think we were both on the Skarsgård train over Holt. But here's his career defining moment. A guy who has missed out on a lot of opportunities, including being Superman. He was one of the yeah. finalists. Yeah. Here it is. His chance to make his mark as a truly memorable villainous character. Yeah. I've had my doubts with him because of the roles, Brian, that he has played. Not to say that they were bad performances, but they weren't, uh, I didn't see the part for him in, in, in as, as a Batman nor Superman, none of those guys. Lex Luthor, I, I, I can, you know, you guys, if you've been watching the show, I was, we were both high on, on the Scars Guards, the either one of them, because we both believe that, uh, Lex Luthor should have a presence. Um, and how tall is Nicholas Holt? Do you know? He is over six feet. I don't believe he's as tall. He is six three. Okay, okay. So the the okay, scars guards okay. are six four. David Corn sweats six four. So that's not really going to be the issue. Yeah. I do okay. wonder. It's interesting. He was supposed to be the villain in the latest Mission Impossible movie, and because of the COVID scheduling delays, he had to drop out. That is the role that would have been, having seen that movie, that's the role that probably would've. would have taken him closest to whatever he's going to do here. Yeah. You know, you wonder how you would look at this casting if he had actually been that character. Like, we'll never know what his take was. Because he was, because mm-hmm. Eastside Morales, who did the character, I think is about 20 years older than Nicholas Holt. So clearly that's a very different riff mm-hmm. on the character. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it made me wonder when he got this part, of like, what was, what would we have seen? And would we view this casting differently had he hit it in that movie. You're right, Brian. This is his shot. This is his shot to uh, propel him to greater heights in his career, or uh, perhaps, I mean, he's going to have opportunities elsewhere, but certainly he can't blow it. He can't. I don't think the bar for me, and I don't think he will give a performance similar to Eisenberg. I, 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 what's his dude's name? What? Jesse Eisenberg. Well, ironically, yeah. I don't think there is an epic live action Lex performance on the board. The one the one that no. you would hold up is is Clancy Brown's yeah. animated performance. That's probably the best Lex I would argue we've seen to date. I, I mean, Hackman was a ham, I mean, great actor, but he was hamming it up. Kevin Spacey was basically yeah. riffing on Gene Hackman. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, Eisenberg yeah. was playing sort of a Silicon Valley geek. Like it, it, no, yeah. nobody has really hit this part in live action. So Holt does not have, he doesn't have a Heath Ledger shadow over him. No, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. So this what this is what makes this a very, very interesting. And James, hey, and James Gunn is directing, so he knows what kind of Lex. Yeah, and like to your get point, it. you've been harping on this theme. I, I would hope we don't know the details of the auditioning, but Holt we know auditioned as Clark. Which makes me wonder, I do think his chemistry with Rachel Brosnahan is just as important as if not more so that, than his yeah, chemistry yeah. with David Corn Sweat. So I wonder, we don't know what that looked like, but we would assume that he screen tested opposite her as part of the process yeah. when he was going for the Clark role. So. I see it, man. I see, I see the vision with James Gunn's uh, Superman legacy. Uh, and you and I have said that this this is it right here. That 2025, the year of DCU. Uh, can't wait. Um, anything else, Brian, before we sign off? Just Google D- New York Times Deal Book Summit, David Zasloff, Bob Iger. There's, it's just gold in there. Read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Nicholas Hope as the Lex Luthor. And do you think the Scar Scar is red for the Rose? I don't think so, Brian, because they were waiting on them. They probably passed. They didn't even bother reading. Uh, Nicholas Hope certainly probably had already read. And they were just waiting to see what they said. And they said not. Nah. And they, Nicholas Holt was probably, yo, dudes, come on, man. Let me get a shot here, man. Come on, man. You I got was everything. a beast. I was a creditable <laughs> beast. Give me a shot. <laughs> like, chill. Let me have this one. Let me eat. Um, so he got it. He got the role. So let us know what, what you guys think. Uh, I think, Brian, I think this is going to be, I'm hoping that this will be a, uh, One of those movies, Brian, that uh, takes us to another level than what we felt for the original. A whole new experience of seeing Superman doing Superman things. That's what I hope for, to seeing something different. Yep. Because we've seen too much already of Deuce Fly. It's how, you know, we've seen it all already. I hope, I hope James Gunn takes that into um, into um, that he thinks about this yeah I think you know, I, we want to see Superman fly and do something different yeah, yeah I boil it down to I want to be able to cheer I want to be able to cry and I want to be able to laugh yeah yeah yes let us know in the conversation below Nerd Gen Report see you next time the show goes on yeah!